so much for being with us tonight. We're going to sing a song. It's a little bit of an older song, an older chorus, but I grew up singing this song. One of the first songs I learned how to play and how to sing, and I love it because it's from the heart of King David um, when he really messed up in his life and he was trying to make things right with God. And uh, it still holds true today. If you just ever feel far away from the heart of God, you can always sing this song, and God will always accept you and bring you back to His heart. Amen. So worship with us as we sing this song tonight. Amen. I Hello everyone, God bless you. It's so good to be with you tonight. It's yes. Wednesday night church and I'm Pastor Jake and this is my beautiful wife Jill. Hello. How awesome it is to be together. I hope everyone's doing well. Yeah, I'm uh, doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. Yes. Church, I hope uh, <laughs> you've had a, a great day and a great week and it's just never anything we take for granted when we know people uh, join us and take time out of your lives to just get into God's Word and to uh, encourage each other, pray for each other, all the things that we do. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about this last Sunday. We had church and we had a really good crowd. Uh, a lot of people yeah. came to church. And after church, we went out and we just went to a restaurant. And it, that restaurant, we must have seen at least three families from our church um, at different mm -hmm. times. The time that we were at the restaurant, we sat down and we just, uh, one after another, we just saw people who um, are part of our Thrive family, and it was such a blessing just to uh, be able to spend time with people and to see them um, in our community, sometimes even away from the church, just to remind us what an awesome church family we have. So um, 
praise God, you know, we're, we're really blessed as a church to, to yes, just do life together and to make memories together. So, you know, as we are on our, you know, this, this series that we've been doing, we've been doing something before we even get into the series, something that we call our, our Thrive Spotlight. And it's where we talk about someone from the church. Uh, it's either an individual or a couple or a family. Um, and this week, I want to talk about someone. We want to highlight somebody, shine the spotlight on somebody who means uh, very, just a whole lot to us. They're yes. just very, very special individual person. And this week, we're going to spotlight Stan Arnott. And we're going to put his picture up. And many of you guys know Stan. Stan uh, and his awesome daughter, Amber, just an incredible blessing to our church. And the reason we want to spotlight Stan is Stan is one of those people that um, never looks for uh, the limelight, kind of mm -hmm. a little uncomfortable. Even we call this the spotlight. Stan um, never really does things to be noticed or to get attention. Yeah. He's one of those people that just has such a humble heart. And mm -hmm. uh, if people don't talk about him, you would never know what an incredible blessing he's been to so many different right. people. But you get to talking to people, people who know Stan and people who do life with Stan, and you find out that Stan is an incredibly generous, uh, just very thoughtful, um, yes. supportive person. And one of the things I want to uh, I want to spotlight Stan for is he's so quick. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but um, week after week, especially on Wednesdays. Whenever we have a point, whenever we have a truth, uh, Stan always uh, takes the time uh, to type that out and to put it there in the comments section because the points are on screen sometimes, but they don't mm -hmm. always stay there a really, really long time. And Stan takes the time to, a lot of people do, always blesses us when people do that, by the way, because yeah. it lets us know that you're getting God's word into your heart. Then it helps other people. Maybe if they're not as, I'm not very fast. I'm not like Stan. I'm not fast at all. But Stan gets it up there, and whether it's the points or the truths, uh, just amazing. And yeah. I've, I've had so many people tell me uh, that, what a blessing that is. So uh, we just want to thank you, Stan. Yes, he's been such he's a been blessing amazing. to our so family. So kind. Um, you're so generous, and um, the, your, the way you carry yourself is just very humble and very sweet and thoughtful. You um, like solve problems without eating people even having to ask and you just are very kind and we our family loves you and you're loved by so many in the church so if you don't know Stan yet you saw his picture you need to meet him he's an awesome man of God so he's kind of shy <laughs> he, he, he doesn't you know he's he doesn't walk in the room and take over yeah. but he is such a sweet sweet man of God and he has such a huge heart for God such a huge heart for people and we just we just like to yeah. spotlight different people and Stan's the man. Stan, we want you to know that we love you. We celebrate you. Like Jill said, our own family for many, many, many years, we can't even share the ways yeah. that you've been such a tremendous blessing, not just to Jill and I, but to our kids. So thoughtful, so kind, so generous, so and, and blessing the church family uh, in, in many, many different ways. So Stan, we love you. We're shining the spotlight on you, brother. Um, because you are a blessing and you make Thrive Church so much better for being a part of us. And we love you very, very much, Stan. God bless you, my friend. And with that being said, we want to get right into our series. And we're in the last few weeks of our series. It's been a tremendous series. It's been called The Names of God. So if you're taking notes, please write that down. Mm -hmm. The Names of God. And as always, you know, every week we study a specific name of God. And tonight, we have a name that we want to share with you. Tonight's sermon title is called this. Write this down, please. The name Jehovah Shama. The name Jehovah Shama. And we want to tell you a little bit about that name and what it means. So right now we want to give you the meaning of the name Jehovah Shama. And here's the meaning right here. It says this. The Lord is there. Mm -hmm. That's so powerful. It's so simple, but it's very, very powerful. Yeah. Jehovah Shammah means the Lord is there. And I just, I just want to tell you what a blessing it is. to. We're talking about the presence of God. We're talking about when God is there for us. And that's literally yes. what this name means, Jehovah Shammah, that God is there. And this might be a little hard to understand because we know that God is omnipresent, which means He's everywhere mm -hmm. all at once. But when we talk about His his um, collective and saturated, uh, the Shekinah glory, the mm -hmm. presence of God. Um, that's what we're talking about because there are times in God's word where God withdraws his presence. Right. 
God's presence is a blessing. And even though he is everywhere, Psalms even says, I can make my bed in the depths of Sheol, or literally um, hell. That's what the Bible says. Uh, I can make my bed there. And you are there, the Bible says, that God's, God is everywhere. But it talks about his presence. And I want to share the first time we see it in Scripture. I always like to share the first time uh, these names appear in mm -hmm. Scripture. And the first time we see it in Scripture, it was at the height of Israel's idolatry. They were constantly having God show up for them, deliver them, do miracles on their behalf, provide for them, and there would be a coming back to God, um, a repentance, but then mm -hmm. there would be a great falling away, cycles of idolatry, which I still believe to this day that we all deal with yes. idolatry. And idolatry is simply putting things uh, before or ahead of God. And we don't, mm -hmm. we don't want to do that, but that was at a time where we're going to see the first time Jehovah Shammah appears in the scripture. That's exactly what was happening. And, and we find it uh, in the book of Ezekiel. And uh, it's, what's beautiful about this is even though God was not there and his presence was withdrawn, taken away from God's people. Why? Because of idolatry, mm -hmm. because of people just saying, we don't want to serve you, God. We don't want to honor you or acknowledge you. Um, God withdrew his presence. But even in that, there's a promise and a prophecy. The first time we see his name, uh, Jehovah Shammah, is God prophesying and promising that he's going to reestablish his presence. Mm -hmm. that I'm not with you now, but there's going to come a time where my presence will be with my people again. And it's beautiful that God even has that heart. Even when right. people are willfully, stubbornly rebelling, rebelling and being, mm -hmm. uh, choosing idolatry over God, this is where we see it for the first time in Scripture. It's found in Ezekiel chapter 48, verse 35. Okay. It says, The distance around the entire city will be six miles, and from that day the name of the city will be, The Lord is There. The Lord is There. So mm -hmm. you'd have to read the entire chapter to understand that God is talking about uh, future events, and He's saying you're going through a desolate time right now, a time where my blessings are not with you, my presence is not with you, but God says it's not always going to stay this way in the future. God is going to establish himself with his people. And the first time we see that name, Jehovah Shammah, is right there in the verse that Jill just read, Ezekiel 48, 35, where the end of it says, the name of the city will be what? The, the Lord, Lord is there, Jehovah Shammah. So it's so powerful. I know there's probably been times in your life where you've experienced the presence of God mm -hmm. in such a powerful, powerful way. And you've also experienced when God withdraws his presence mm -hmm. from you. And, and oftentimes it's not even necessarily God pulling away from us, it's us wandering right. away from God or choosing things before God, putting mm -hmm. things ahead of him or above him or before him. And with that being said, and we're talking about the Lord is there, Jehovah Shammah, uh, we're gonna give you two points like we always do. And the first point is this, please write this down, church. God's presence changes our heart. Yes. God's presence changes our heart. And when you think about the human heart, and Jeremiah says the, the heart is deceitfully wicked and beyond cure, who can know it? Um, there is nothing on earth that can change the human heart. There's no therapy, and God bless people who have been trained and are educated and can help, and, and, and we value that, that's awesome, but there's no therapy, there's no medicine, there's no uh, place you can go to, there's no thing you can, you can do or find that can really truly change the human heart. The only thing that can really change the human heart is God and His presence in our life. And I want you to see that, that when, when God is in our life in a powerful way, when we surrender to God and we're in the presence of God, you, you have to connect the two. That being in God's presence can't help but change our heart. So point number one, God's presence changes our heart. Mm -hmm. Being in His presence, staying in His presence, it will make our hearts more godly. Right. It's, just, it's just a powerful truth. And we want to give you a few scriptures. The first scripture we want to give you is Psalm 51, verses 10 and 11. And this is a story mm -hmm. of David, mm -hmm. and David had um, sinned, and we know this. At a time when kings should have been at war, David stayed behind. He sent the armies, and he was a warrior. 
but he sent them and he was he was on his palace rooftop he saw Bathsheba um, you know naked and exposed and she didn't know and the king was watching her lust filled his heart he took her he got her pregnant we know the story um, he sent his her her husband uh, into war and had the, the armies withdraw in the heat of the battle so that he would be killed in battle to try to hide and to cover up his sin. What Basically, this is a season in David's life where mm -hmm. he was a man after God's own heart, but during this time he had pulled away from God and a lot of idols in David's life and lust mm -hmm. and, and uh, just women and just desires and just doing what he wanted to do. So now we find um, the prophet... Uh, Nathaniel has come, and it's. And I'm gonna give it to you again. This address, um, and this is him repenting after the prophet has exposed him and said that that you are the person that mm -hmm. that I'm talking about in this story. You are the person that God is not pleased with. You are the person that the adulterer, the murderer, the one who's done all of these bad things. You are that person. And David in Psalms 51 has a heart of repentance, and he talks about the presence of God. So mm -hmm. it says in Psalms 51 verses 10 and 11. Yeah. It says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. You know, earlier we sang that song, uh, Create in me a clean heart. And when you know David's story, everything we just shared about his life, we have to understand that David was, was pleading for God to 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 forgive him yeah. and to cleanse his heart. But he says something in that verse. He says, cast me not away from your presence. David knows the importance. As somebody who has lived in God's presence, right. knows the presence of God, worships God, has a heart after God. And yet there are seasons in all of our lives mm -hmm. where we pull away from God. We get outside of, of the presence of God. Mm -hmm. David's not pleading for his crown. He's not pleading for the throne. He's not pleading for the kingdom. But yes, he's saying, create in me a clean heart, right. renew a right spirit. But he's saying, cast me not away from your presence. He's saying, I cannot live away from your presence any longer. I'm guilty. I'm sorry for what I've done. And being in your presence will give me a clean heart. Being in your Good. presence will give me a right spirit. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Mm -hmm. So that happens to every single one of us. Right. You get away from the heart of God. We're all capable of the absolute worst acts, the worst mm -hmm. thoughts, the worst deeds. We're all capable of it. You put things before God and here it is. You get outside of the presence of God. Yeah. We're all, you know, we're all capable and we've all been guilty of it in our, in our past. And that's what's beautiful about David is he says, it's the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And what's point number one? God's presence changes our heart. That's yes. why David prayed that prayer. That's why we sang the song that we sung because that's our prayer too. Mm -hmm. uh, when you get outside the presence of God, your heart changes. Yeah. It's not good. Things get dark. And when you get distance from God and you lose that intimacy, all kinds of sinful and bad things can happen. Sure. So, and this is God's uh, promise. You know, he doesn't want to just do something from afar. He doesn't want to just forgive us or cleanse us, but it's all about proximity. It's all about mm -hmm. his presence. So look at this scripture right now, Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. It says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. How awesome is that? God knows that we have heart issues and right. all those heart issues have to do with his presence, whether his presence is in our life mm -hmm. or not in our life. And it's not something that, you know, it's not some ritual we perform. It's not some prayer that we pray, some repetitious prayer. It's not some formula that we follow. It really comes down to relationship, it comes down to being mm -hmm. in God's presence. And God wants to give, he wants to touch our heart. And that, what, that was point number one, God's presence changes our heart. We learn that yeah. from, from King David crying out to God. He got away from God's presence and he just did despicable, horrible, unthinkable things. And the truth is that's every single one of us. We sure. get away from the presence of God. Things go wrong with our life and our heart. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and God says in what the scripture Jill just read that he wants to give us a new heart, put a new spirit in us. And he says, I'll remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And that's powerful to think of what happens. And I want to give you a truth right now. I want you to write this down because it really illustrates that last scripture very mm -hmm. well. Write this truth down. Every step you take away from God hardens your heart. It's true. We're talking about the presence of God. We're talking about Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. 
wherever God is. You live in His presence. You strive to be in His presence. You get away from His presence. Every step you take away from God hardens mm-hmm. your heart. Mm-hmm. If you're going through life and you feel, and it's not just emotions, it's, it's the closeness of your heart to God. There are people who I know are saved, but they're getting a little bit away from the heart of God. Mm-hmm. And what happens is our heart gets hardened. According to scripture, God says, the closer you are to me, the more, you know, there's two Davids. There's the David that would cry out to God and weep before God mm-hmm. and worship God. Then there was the David that says, I don't want to do my kingly duties. I don't want to, I don't want to lead the men in battle. And I, I'd rather be over here doing things to satisfy and appease my flesh. And that's inside of every single one of us, mm-hmm. whether you're a man or woman, whether you've served God your whole life or right. you've never been a Christian, it's all about God's presence. And every step you take away from God, it hardens your heart. Mm-hmm. The longer you live away from God, the more your heart becomes like stone, according to scripture. So what do we do? We go towards the Lord. We come to the Lord and, and repentance the way David did mm-hmm. in Psalms 51. We say, God, it don't remove me from your presence let me come to you yes. god so that you can forgive me you can cleanse me what does god's presence do point number one god's presence changes our Amen. heart so we're going to go to point number two right now please write this down not only does god's presence change our heart but point number two god's presence sets us apart Amen. so it changes our heart and it sets us apart mm-hmm. that's what's powerful god's really presence good. sets us apart and we probably think, oh, you know what, we're set apart, you know, because of, of, of the giftings God, God has placed in our lives, our talents, our ability. And none of that stuff is what sets us apart right. or distinguishes us. Because the truth is we're not better than anybody on the face of the earth. We're not high and mighty. We're, not, we're just not, we're not better than anybody. We're all sinners. We're saved by grace, really. So what mm-hmm. sets us apart? When people look at us and they see us and they say there's something different about you there's something that sets you apart we don't cast our own light we reflect the light Mm -hmm. of god which simply means it's god's presence that sets us apart and of course we're going to share a scripture that's probably one of my all-time favorites i love this chapter i love the story and if i'm not careful i can really bog down in telling all of it so i won't do that but exodus 33 Mm -hmm. it's a time where moses has just been leading the people of god and he's just exhausted and he's doing everything he can and the people are constantly rebelling against Moses, God's you know, uh, leadership he's established for mm-hmm. his people and they're not having it. They're str- Moses is struggling to lead the people of God, but you know what, it's not just Moses, God is frustrated with right. his people. So you have God and Moses just frustrated with the people of God, so much so the Bible calls them stiff-necked and rebellious they just, uh, it's like that idolatry. Right. They just don't want to follow the heart of God. Even though he splits the Red Sea, even though he provides, you know, manna from the heavens and, and, and or manna on the ground and, and quail from the heavens, he just takes care of all of their needs. Right. They don't want to have any part of God. So God is fed up with his people. And he tells Moses in Exodus 33, you know what, I've promised you the promised land, but I'm no longer going with you. That was the original plan. I was gonna be with you and I was gonna go with you. I'm no longer going with my people. I'm gonna send an angel to go before you and my promise will be fulfilled, but I'm not going, I'm not going with you. And this is what he said to Moses. He said, my peace, my presence will be with you, but not the people of God. I'm paraphrasing, but that's what Exodus 33 sure. talks about. And then we find Moses' reply. You would think Moses would be so frustrated with the people who won't follow who are stiff-necked, and, and, the, and he was frustrated. We see that many times in right. scriptures where he cried out to God about the people's unwillingness to follow God or to follow Moses for that matter. But this is what's powerful because Moses says something that captivates the heart of God. Moses' response to God when God says, I'm not going with them, I will go with you, Moses. My presence will be with you, but not my people. This is what Moses says in response to that. Exodus 33, verses 15 and 16. Okay. Moses replied, If you won't go yourself, don't make us leave here, because how will anyone know that we have your special approval, both I and your people, unless you go with us? Only that distinguishes us, me and your people, from every other people on earth. So there it is, Jehovah Shammah. Right. Moses is, is moving the heart of God by saying, you know, I know I'm good with you, God, and I know you'll go with me, but he's including himself with God's people. Moses is saying, 
you know, how will anyone know that we have your special approval? Um, and both I or your people, unless you go with us, all of us. And Moses was stepping up in an incredible way when the people didn't deserve it and the people were idolatrous and they were just rebellious, they weren't right. It was Moses mm -hmm. just speaking up and telling God. He says something that moves the heart of God. He says, uh, only that distinguishes us, me and your people, from every other people on the earth. What distinguishes us, church? It's not our looks, it's right. not our gifts, it's not our talents, it's not our abilities, right. it's not your last name, it's not your family, it's not your church, it's not your ministry, it's not your job, it's not your successes, it's not your education. None of those things right. distinguish us from anybody else. Moses says, it's your presence, Jehovah Shammah, Lord that you are here. And that's the only thing, and it's not a, it's not a arrogant thing it's not a cocky thing it's not about being better it's about people seeing something that we have in our life right. which is the presence of god and that's recognizing that and saying god if we don't have that moses said i don't we, i won't go if you're not going with us then i'm not going to go we're not going to go anywhere without your presence how right. important is that lesson for all of us to learn yeah that's always spoken to my heart where moses said you know what you can have the promise but if you don't have the presence of god what good is the promise right. of god and Moses put the presence of God over the promise. We got to get that into sure. our hearts. So we have a few more scriptures we just want to give you. Again, what's point number two? God's presence sets us apart or distinguishes so us. Here's another scripture for you. Psalm chapter four, verse three. Okay, it says, but know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. It's just a simple scripture. Mm-hmm. In fact, we're going to read another scripture right, right after that because it says the same thing, a different book, mm -hmm. but it's the idea of recognizing that God has called us to be set apart. God wants us to be distinguished, and it's, it's God who does it. It's his presence in our life. Amen. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 26 mm -hmm. says this. You shall be holy to me, for I the Lord am holy and have, been separate, and have separated you from the peoples, that you should be mine. So God wants us to be His and God distinguishes right. us. And the only thing that makes God ours, according to Scripture, is His presence. Is mm -hmm. us, you know, of course we have to be holy and being with God makes us holy. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's the entire point of, the, of, uh, of this. Point number two, God's mm -hmm. presence sets us apart. Amen. It's His presence. And I want to give you this truth right now. Please write this down. It's the last truth we have for you. But write this down and get this into your heart. If you're willing to be separated unto God, you'll never be separated from God. That's good. If you're willing to be separated unto God, mm -hmm. that means in this life, you say, you know what, I'm gonna do everything I can to live in his presence, to have his, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm separate, I'm set apart, I'm distinguished, I'm gonna do everything I can in this life, mm -hmm. in my life that I have, the days that I have, I'm gonna do everything I can if you're willing to be separated unto God in this life, mm -hmm. you'll never be separated from God. Yeah. Get that into your heart, church. You're never going to be separated from God. God wants us to get that into each and every one of our hearts. He wants us to understand that it's His presence. Yes. And you know what? We can't live a day without His presence. We often do. We get away right. from God. And just like, what was point number one? God's presence changes our heart. Right. What does the Bible say when we take steps away from God? When we get away from God, our heart becomes hardened, even mm -hmm. like a stone. You come back towards the Lord, what happens? He'll give you a new heart, a new spirit, a heart of flesh. And David cried out, he said, cast me not away from your presence. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. So point number one, God's presence changes our heart. Point number two, God's presence sets us apart. Mm -hmm. Not setting us apart to be better than anyone, to be high and mighty, but the presence of God distinguishes us. Right. And God says, you know what? I know it's difficult to be separate from the culture that you live in, from the world that you live in. I know it's, it's hard to be set apart, mm -hmm. but if it's not an arrogant thing. It's not a high and mighty thing. It's saying, you know what? God, I accept that, and I'm gonna I'm gonna strive for Your presence, and I'm also God. I just want I just want I want to be set apart, and if you're set apart from God, you're never gonna be separated yeah. from Him. That's what that's what His Word teaches us. So, with all that being said, Church, what was tonight's sermon title? What's the name of God? Jehovah Shammah. Jehovah Shammah. And I just want to say one last time: it's not about feelings or emotions, but it's the truth of the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Listen, we know. When we're living in sin, mm -hmm. that's, that God will not coexist with sin in our life. He won't, 
he won't just uh, look the other way and say, you know what, it's okay. Um, I'm not pleased with what you're doing, but I'm gonna still give you my, the blessing of my presence. It's not how God works. We know that his word is clear. So if you're living in a place where you just, you don't feel like you have the presence of God in your life, or let me ask you this, mm -hmm. if you feel like your heart is hardened and you feel like it's like the Bible describes a heart of stone and you wanna cry out the way David mm -hmm. did, and you wanna say, God, I want you to change my heart. I want you to set me apart. Mm -hmm. I want you to know how simple it is. His presence can do that. Yes. And if you pray a prayer of faith, if you ask Jesus to be Lord and Savior, it's all you have to Amen. do is pray that prayer and come towards the Lord and say, mm -hmm. even in my sin, God, I confess my sin to you. I'm like David, the heart of David. Right. I want to be in your presence. I want a new heart. Take my heart of stone. Give me a heart of flesh, Lord. And that's something we've got to like continually pray. It's an ongoing yes. thing, like in the world we live and just our flesh. It's a constant battle where we just need to, God created me a clean heart. Make me Every pure. Every day. Yes, absolutely. Even if you're a Christian and you pray this prayer, mm -hmm. tomorrow you're going to have to wake up, just like Jill said. Say the prayer again. <laughs> Being in His presence yeah. takes work. It's constant and it's intentional. Yes. But right now, if you're if you're not even in that place where you, you know you're a Christian and you're not sure and you say, you know what, I just want to make things right. I want to mm -hmm. do what you're saying. I want to pray a prayer of faith. We want to lead you in that prayer right now. Maybe you've prayed this prayer before and it's been a long time ago or it's been fairly recent, but you keep walking away from God and you keep letting go of God's presence, but you want to change that. It's okay. Yes. If you've never prayed this prayer before, right now is your moment. We want to lead you in this prayer. So I just ask you to bow your heart mm -hmm. right there where you are. And I'd ask you just to repeat this prayer after me and say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I come to you in Jesus' name. I come to you in Jesus' name. Jesus. Jesus. I need you. I need you. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. I believe you died for me. I believe you died for me. So that I can have eternal life. So I can have eternal life. I ask you to be. I ask you to be. My Lord and Savior. My Lord and Savior. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me. Of all my sins. Of all my sins. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For saving me. For saving me. And for setting me free and for setting me free I belong to you I belong to you all that I have all that I have and all that I am and all that I am is yours is yours I will serve you I will serve you all the days of my life all the days of my life in Jesus name I pray in Jesus name I pray amen amen if you prayed that prayer you are a Christian you are a believer mm -hmm. God has written your name in the Lamb's book of life he's brought you from darkness into his marvelous light and uh, now, like Jill said a moment ago, you're going to have to fight yes. to stay in the presence of God. But he's exchanged that heart of stone for a heart of flesh. And his, he's created a clean heart yes. in you. And just like yeah, David, when he was at our, his best, that's what we're going to do. Uh, just like Moses, we're going to say, God, it's your presence that mm -hmm. distinguishes us. So we want to encourage you. And one of the things that we do is we try to get this booklet into everyone's hand. Because right after you pray that prayer, this booklet is called Now What? And it addresses what you should do after you pray a prayer like that, a prayer of salvation. You need to uh, get into the Word of God. You need to get connected to a church mm -hmm. so you can grow and be fed and be Amen. discipled. This is a seven-day devotional. It's so easy to do. Um, and we want to get this booklet into your hands. So we do have these books at the church. On Sundays, you can, they're right up by the altar. You don't even have to go ask anyone. You can just go grab a little blue book. But we do want to know who is praying these prayers mm -hmm. so that we can follow up and connect with you. If you prayed that prayer, let us know. You can let us know in the comment section or message us, or you can call the church at 303-428-9535 and say, I prayed that prayer. I just like a little support and encouragement. And if yeah. that's you, we'll follow up with you mm -hmm. and help you just get established in the Lord so that we can all live in God's presence. Yes. And we're grateful for Jehovah Shammah. The, Lord's, the Lord is there. God is with us. So mm -hmm. let's do everything we can to keep God's presence in our life. Amen. And I'm going to ask Jill right now just to pray a prayer of blessing over us. Yeah. Okay, let's pray. God, we come to you right now. We just thank you so much yes, for Lord. your word, God, and that you are with us. You are Jehovah Shammah. And Lord, I just ask you, that God. you would go with us this next week. Mm. God, that you'd give us ears to hear you um, and that we would just be your hand extended, you, being able to love on our family and coworkers and people around us Jesus. and um, be godly in situations we're in, Lord. We thank you for that. Please protect our church family. Strengthen those that are struggling yes, um, emotionally.
emotionally or even physically. We thank you for that, Father. In your precious name, we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us, church. We love you. God bless. Pastor Noah here. Wanted to jump on, just give a quick tithe message to you. Remind you to continue to give. Um, that's the heart uh, of God is for us to give in, in every way that we're, we're called to do that. So I want to share a scripture with you. Um, uh, one thing that I studied when I was looking at tithing is that the very first tithe that God ever uh, gave to mankind was when Adam was in the garden. And he said, look, you can have every of, of every tree around here except for this one. He was already teaching him the principle of obedience to say, you need, this one is mine. And in the same way, God teaches that with our uh, giving. He's telling us that uh, uh, we need to give our 10% to the Lord, our tithe to God. And in Leviticus 27, 30, it says this, A tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. So he's reminding us that whatever our source is, we need to give from that and give him the first fruit of that because it's holy to him. It's so important to him when he sees our obedience and he sees that we're giving from our source, he begins to give from his source, which is eternal. So let's take a hold of that. Thank you so much. Uh, You can go to our website at uh, www.wethrive.org and click on the donate tab. And uh, we just want to thank you so much.